All right, my friends, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of the Premier League show. This match week that's incoming, match week 29, that we're going to preview and predict in today's episode is a big derby weekend. There's a lot of games going on that are going to be very, very exciting and could have implications for the top and the bottom of the table. The midweek round of fixtures have kind of done that as well. It's been very, very interesting to sit back and watch my friends. And before we do that, I'm going to apologise. There's going to be no fan zone. Uh, when I was getting ready to make today's episode, uh, I completely forgot to basically look at the comments and get the best ones. I really don't want fan zone to disappear from the show. It's a massive part of it. It's one of my favourite parts. I love reading your predictions. Uh, so I do promise next time out, I will definitely include them. So please feel free to leave your Match Week 30 predictions in the comment section below. Also, if you want to send it via a video message, remember you can do that as well. Just get in touch with me via the social and I will send you the email address that you need to send it to and then you can appear on this uh, beautiful, beautiful platform as well, my friends. But let's get cracking because the midweek uh, fixtures have not long finished and I need to get some sleep. So let's get to it. Let's predict match week 29. So my friends, you are going to see the Saturday games making their way onto the screen right now and you will see that Saturday is getting kick-started with one of the biggest derbies in the Premier League. I am of course talking about Tottenham versus Arsenal. It's a 12.30 kickoff. It's live on BT Sports that, for those that are interested and want to sit down and watch it. Um, I actually won't be. I'm having a driving lesson. I'm an absolute idiot booking a driving lesson during this game but um, I will record it and watch it a bit later. But last five in the Premier League between these two teams resulting in two wins to Spurs, two wins to Arsenal, one draw, very even in recent history and the last meet was a 4-2 victory to Arsenal uh, earlier on this season um, in a weekend of derbies, it's nice to see we're getting it kicked off with one of the biggest as I've already said, um Arsenal won the last one and of course Tottenham are going to want some payback in the fixture but things are not going too great for Spurs at the moment are they ladies and gents. Um, Tottenham's form is a little bit off. Um, a lot to be desired at this moment in time. Back to back defeats against Burnley and Chelsea it really really does appear that the wheels have come off of their title challenge. Um, you know I kind of hinted that they bottled it last time out. I don't think it's so much a bottle job. It was an overachievement but now uh, they're getting dragged into this fight for fourth because should they I think it's only four points now should they lose to Arsenal it's down to a point and Arsenal and Manchester United are fast on their heels Chelsea can still be considered as well because they got a good win midweek it could be very close for the teams that take third and fourth if Tottenham continue to play the way they are. The pressure is getting to them. It's starting to tell. And um, I know that they're going to be happy to have Harry Kane back in the team, fit and playing well again. He barely got a sniff against Chelsea. But when he's in your team, you at least have a chance at scoring goals. As far as Arsenal are concerned, they've come into some very, very good form of late. And especially going forward, they look like they are more than capable of scoring plenty of goals. To go and snatch five against Bournemouth was very, very impressive. And I think the partnership of Lacazette and Aubameyang is going to be uh, the most important thing come Saturday when these two teams face off. Iwobi's decent performances as well have been great. I think Ozil against Bournemouth was very, very good. Whether or not he's going to be involved on Saturday is yet to be seen. But far improved from Arsenal and that top four is now starting to look like a possibility again and as I keep saying I've told the Arsenal fans be patient and Emery will reward you and he may be rewarding you now. I actually think if they get top four this season, that is an unbelievable first year for Emery when you think that he still needs probably two or three windows to sort this team out. I actually think that Arsenal are going to edge this derby. Uh, I think with the way Spurs are playing at the moment, they're finding it hard to create chances, not scoring a lot of goals. Two defeats on the bounce. The wheels have come off. They're going to be thinking about the Dortmund game as well midweek. Um, I'm going to go with a 2-1 to Arsenal in this game. And, you know... London, North London will be red. Um, we're now going to move on, my friends, to the rest of the games to take place on Saturday. And the first of the three o'clockers is Bournemouth versus Manchester City. Last five in the Premier League between these two teams. Uh, five wins to City. Last meet was a 3-1 win to Man City. They've met seven times in the Premier League and City have won every single time. Uh, Bournemouth just do not like playing Um this team. Uh, Bournemouth are finding it a real struggle in the Premier League at this moment in time. Only one win in their last five games. Three of those last five are losses. Uh, they were on the end of a hiding against Arsenal. They scored in the game but never really looked like threatening Arsenal at all. It was a very good performance by the Gunners. Um, you know, 
and with City up next, it's just not the best run of teams that they've had to face of late. Uh, they need to turn things around. They need to start finishing off their chances again. And, you know, they wa they're going to want the best place finish possible this season. You know, for large parts, it looked like it was going to be a top half finish. But with the other teams could perform in the way they are, they really could drop off now. And it'd be disappointing to see that for them. They've really missed Wilson up top. I do, do honestly believe that. They need to get him back fit and firing. Uh, Man City are going into this one still in the hunt. Massive hunt for the Premier League title. Um, I actually think they were quite lucky against West Ham. Um, a lot of possession, a lot of chances. Didn't really make a lot of it. Put away the penalty to get the win, but in my opinion, it wasn't a penalty. Um, very, very soft and very hard on West Ham. Some may think I'm being a bit biased there because I'm a West Ham fan, but I do genuinely think it was very, very, you know, hard on the Hammers. Um, you know, they had to rotate very, you know, heavy schedule lately for Manchester City. Um, you know, the cup final took it out of a lot of players. But their second team did the job. They are missing some key players, though. Fernandinho, it looks like he's going to be out until well after the national break. So that's a big miss for them because he is one of their unsung heroes. But it's still going well. They're still in the hunt. They're still only a point behind Liverpool. And it's still there for the taking. I get the feeling this is the one that means the most to Guardiola. They're going to fight right till the bitter end. Um, as far as this game is concerned, I'm going to go with City just because Bournemouth are not performing well at the moment. And City, obviously, uh, still in the hunt for the title. I'm going to go with a 2-0 win to City on the day. Uh, Brighton versus Huddersfield is the next game we're going to talk about. Last um, times these have met have resulted in a win apiece and a draw. They've only met three times in the Premier League. Um, last meet was a 2-1 win to Brighton. Uh, an, away, an, an away win, something they don't do very often. Um, both come into this game, though, in very, very poor form. And surprisingly so, Huddersfield actually come into it in better form than Brighton. I never really thought I would say that from their last five games. Um, Brighton haven't won in their last five. Four losses to boot, uh, a draw as well, I believe, in there. And they've now been dragged into the relegation fight. 27 points is not a lot and by no means means, uh, you know, that you are safe. Um, I think the two closest teams to them are on 25 and 24. They're, well, they're being dragged in there, you know... Uh, Personally, I think it's a bit of a free horse race now for the team that tries to stay in the division. I think it's between probably Southampton, Cardiff and Brighton. Brighton, I've said all season long, their away form was going to hurt them eventually. If they lose a couple of home games, they would get dragged in. And that is exactly what has happened to them. And they're going to have a fight on their hands now with not many games to go to attempt to stay in this league. Uh, Huddersfield um, won midweek, surprisingly, against the Wolves. I gave them no chance. I completely wrote them off. Um... But they were helped by a poor Wolves team, but they still had to do the job. As I always say, you can only beat what's in front of you. Um, they showed plenty of fight and nicked all three points. Um, you know, put the put the chance away. 1-0 win. Great stuff for them. It's a shame they've waited this long to actually show us a little bit of fight. And weirdly enough as well, they've done the league double over Wolves. So they took six points off of them. A team that have done very well this season. Um, the polar opposite to what Huddersfield have managed to achieve you know, at least this manager's showing something and potentially could do well with them when they get relegated because I still don't think this win was enough. Um, this is a big game, though, a massive game for Brighton. I think, like I already said, Huddersfield, for me, are already relegated. But should they win, then that's massive for them. Um, you know, I think they'd be level on points with Fulham then. So, you know, anything is possible, but it's massive for Brighton. With that said, I really think at home, fans will get behind that team. Going to go with a very narrow 1-0 victory to them. Um, um, we're now going to talk Burnley versus Crystal Palace, ladies and gents. Last five in the Premier League between these two. Three wins to Burnley, two wins to Crystal Palace. The last meet was a 2-0 to Palace earlier this season, though. Um, Burnley suffered a defeat against Newcastle, a game I really honestly thought they were going to win. And it was their first defeat in eight games. It does show you how brilliant they have been recently. Um, it's been a quite brilliant effort to put that run of eight games without defeat together, but they did look pretty leggy against Newcastle and were punished by the better organised team, the better team on the day. Um, I honestly think maybe the Spurs result took a little bit out of the team. It's a lot of games to play, isn't it? Two or three in a week, and uh, I think they saved their best for Spurs and just kind of just took the L against Newcastle. Unfortunately, I honestly think that um, you know both these teams are safe going into this game. I think there's still 
all big points to be one. And I think this game is actually a massive game from both because three points here pretty much all but guarantees safety, especially with the way the teams below are playing at the moment. Crystal Palace, though, they've been in pretty good Premier League form as well. Before that loss to Manchester United midweek, they did have two wins and two draws before that. And, uh, you know, from their last, uh, you know, a few games. And it just shows you how improved they've been. The biggest part of their improvement is the fact they're putting chances away. You know, they scored one against United. They scored four before that, a couple before that. It's just, you know, they convert. The, if they convert the chances, they're always going to win games. When you're creating 20 plus chances a game, it's only a matter of time before you're going to start putting a run of wins together. And they've done just that recently. Um, as far as this game's concerned, I think it's going to be tight. I think both teams are going to know the importance. I think they'll be happy if they take the result I think they're going to go with. And I think it's going to be a 1-1 one -one on the day. Um, next, we're going to talk Manchester United versus Southampton. Ladies and gents, last five in the Premier League. Two wins to Manchester United and three draws. The last meet was a 2-2 draw earlier this season. Even with the injury crisis that Manchester United are suffering at the moment, it, you know, they still managed to put a good performance together and grab themselves a very important three points in their fight for a Champions League spot. Um, you know, up to 10 first-team players injured for Manchester United at the moment, uh, yet Oli keeps getting the job done. You know, a good draw against Liverpool, then backs it up with a good win midweek against Crystal Palace, and the form is still there, and the hunt for top four is still on. Um, you know, it doesn't really have any relevance to the team, but I, I did hear on Talk Sport someone saying that the game should have been abandoned because of the injuries. There was a point where West Ham had 12 or 13 players players out injured um, we never asked for anything like that uh, it just shows you big club mentality or should I say big club fans mentality but it was a huge win midweek and you know if they can get a big win in this one against Southampton lines them up nicely for that game against Arsenal which could be a bit of a decider on which one of those two teams gets top four at the end of the season uh, Southampton continue to fight to stay in the Premier League a good win midweek against Fulham taking full advantage of what a poor poor team they are they recorded their first win in four um, you know after a couple of defeats that were back-to-back. -back. Bit of a yo-yo season, unfortunately, for Southampton. It's weird that they're still down there. Uh, they're a very good football team, but they are. And they're, like I've already said, one of three teams, I think, could still go down. And consistency is the biggest thing. If they can put a run together, be consistent, I think Southampton have enough to stay up. They've got some very, very good players there. But maybe this weekend will just be a little bit too much. I am going to go with a home win at Old Trafford. Manchester United have been brilliant under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I'm going to go with a 2 nil win to the Red Devils. Um, we're now going to talk Wolves versus Cardiff, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, last, uh, they've only met once in the Premier League, I should say. Last meet was a 2-1 win to Cardiff. Wolves just haven't done very well against the newly promoted teams, have they? The ones that came up with them. Um, how poor were Wolves, though, last time out? I've already kind of mentioned it, you know, when I talked about Huddersfield, but they were very, very poor, you know. The, for a team that I thought were kind of nailed on to finish 7th or 8th, they're now looking like they could tail off a bit, especially with the way that teams in and around them have started to play. They didn't even record a shot on target against Huddersfield. That just shows you how poor they are. They've got to convert the chances. They've got to be better in front of goal. And there's been lapses of this all season long. They've, you know... Um, you know, they go for a run where they're scoring plenty of goals and then they'll come up against a tough physical team and they can't seem to deal with them and break them down. And uh, it is, a, you know, an Achilles heel of Wolves and it has been all season long. Um, after back-to-back -back wins, Cardiff, you then go and record back-to-back -back defeats. They really are the epitome of a yo-yo team. So inconsistent. Um, and not only were they back-to-back -back defeats, but been on the end of a couple of hidings, really conceded eight goals in the last two games. And that's not going to help your goal difference when you're trying to stay in the Premier League um, I, you know again I am going to repeat this but they are one of three that I still think can stay up they're probably the most inconsistent of the three that I think um, you know could stay in the league but under Warnock he seems to have instilled some form of belief and they honestly from time to time can go on two or three losses but still look capable of winning the next game it's a very very strange situation do I think they're going to win this one no I think we're going to get a reaction out of Wolves a home win I'm going to go with a 1-0 and the last Last game we're going to talk about from Saturday is the late kickoff, the 5.30 live on Sky Sports, ladies and gents, between West Ham United and Newcastle. Um, no need to be sitting at home watching this one because I, of course, will be at the London Stadium. Last five in the Premier League, though, two wins to West Ham, three wins to Newcastle. Last minute was a 3-0 to West Ham early this season when we were very impressive uh, up north. And this is going to be a special game for um, uh, reasons that have nothing to really do with the match. And it is, of course, because the East Stand at the London Stadium is now being re named the Billy Bond stand. Uh, Bonzo is, you know, being honoured with this and it deservedly so. He is a legend of the football club. Um, so we will have all this good
good stuff before the game. So any West Ham fans watching, make sure you're there a good half hour before kickoff because apparently that's when it's going to happen. Um, a spirited defeat for West Ham midweek against Manchester City. I honestly thought we were going to go out there and get hammered. City usually love playing us and score plenty of goals. Um, but it was a tired, rotated Manchester City team. And I think West Ham, you know, made the most of it. West Ham were forced into making some changes to their own. No Ben Johnson making his debut, playing at left back because of injuries. And obviously Arnautovic didn't play either because he went down with a sickness. So Andy Carroll came into the team. But it was still a good performance. Good defensive line. Probably one of the best defensive lines I've seen us keep all season long. We were very unlucky to be on the end of a defeat um you know especially as from, for me it wasn't a penalty um this is a big game this one um West Ham still trying to go after as many points as possible trying to be one of the best of the rest in the top half Newcastle improved form um so I'm sure West Ham will try to put on a performance and make it extra special for Bonzo um Newcastle come into this one and it amazes me that Newcastle are still in the lower reaches of the table because when you look at their form, they really shouldn't be there. And with three wins and a, a draw and a loss from their last five games, it's quite sensational to think they're in the lower reaches of the table. Um, one of those wins even come against Manchester City, we have to remember. So it just shows you how improved they've been. They were a very good midweek, um, beating a Burnley team that hadn't lost in eight games. And, and a thunderbolt from Shah as well was probably capped off one of the goals of the midweek fixtures. Very good stuff from Rafa Benitez's team. I am a little bit worried, I'm going to be honest. Um, as far as the score prediction is concerned, though, I'm going to go with a 2-1 to West Ham. Probably foolish, because they quite like playing us at the London Stadium. Um, we are now going to move on, ladies and gents, to the three games that are taking place on Sunday. And uh, you're going to see they're all live on Sky Sports. So make sure you tune in and watch each and every one of them. First one we're going to talk about is Watford versus Leicester. 12 o'clock kickoff, ladies and gents. Uh, the last five in the Premier League between these two teams have resulted in two wins to Watford and three wins to Leicester. The last meet was a 2-0 win to Leicester. Uh, Watford are coming to this one after a bit of a hiding, don't they, against Liverpool. Um, obviously, Liverpool are going after the title. They're trying to chalk up as many goals as possible. And they're, you know, Watford are not going to be the last team that are going to be defeated heavily by this Liverpool team before the end of the season. Um, it was a bit of a surprise, though, that Watford rolled over so easy. They've been playing pretty well recently, scoring goals, creating chances. But this was a very easy day at the office for Liverpool. And Watford are going to have to be a lot better to make sure it's not the case for Leicester and where Leicester are concerned there's going to be a little bit of a resurgence and probably a bit of a reaction because they did not hang about they went and got their man and have appointed Brendan Rodgers as the new manager um, to Peter Shepherd and a few others that mentioned Brendan Rodgers well done you called it straight off the bat I was surprised though that they got it done so quickly it's a talented bunch at Leicester it, now we have to wait and see if Brendan Rodgers is the man to get the best out out of these players um, you know he was there in attendance to watch them win midweek as they got back to winning ways after a pretty torrid time of it recently and uh, yeah it was it was a good win against Brighton but Brighton are a team that have never been good on the road this is going to be a difficult one to predict I think we're going to see a reaction from Leicester but surely we have to see one from Watford as well and Watford have been pretty good at home under Gracia I'm going to go over score draw, an exciting one, a 2-2. Two -two. Next up, we're going to talk Fulham versus Chelsea, ladies and gents. A 5 past 2 kickoff, I do believe. And this one is a London derby. These two do not really like each other. Last five in the Premier League, four wins to Chelsea, one draw. Last meet was a 2-0 win to Chelsea earlier this season. Uh, uh, you know, a decent London derby, as I've already said, awaits us. Um, different ends of the table, both after different things. One's playing to stay up, the other one playing for top four and Champions League qualification. Fulham, though, just suffered another defeat midweek. And for me, I think that's it. I think that's game, a set and match as far as their Premier League lives are concerned. It was a big six-pointer against Southampton and they didn't really do a lot and didn't really show up. I just don't think they have enough to be a Premier League team. I don't think they have enough fight. I don't think they have enough in that team. They, they rotate so much. I still don't think Ranieri knows his strongest team and they're suffering as a result and I think they're going to probably join Huddersfield in the championship if they're not careful though they're going to finish bottom of the pile and uh, that's not what you want um, when you know you, you, you want to play for some pride and at least if you're going to get relegated go down with a fight and Fulham are not really doing that at the moment um, it was nice to see Sarri drop Kepa um, in their midweek game against Tottenham Caballero come in to goal uh, kept a clean sheet as well and uh, didn't really have much to do played alright but it's good to see that Sarri dropped him I said you know I tweeted out on, on the socials and stuff 
that even though Sarri came out and bottled it a little bit in the uh, post-match interview after the Carabao Cup saying, no, it's just a misunderstanding, I still believed that there was more to it than that. And I think the fine and the dropping of Kepa has showed that. I think he just said that to the media so there wasn't a media storm and he just shut it down. Uh, and then he's dealt with it inside the club. And I actually quite like that. I quite respect the way that Sarri has dealt with the problem. Kepa deserved to be dropped. And, uh, you know, Chelsea were very good against Spurs as well. We have to say that. There were no signs of fatigue, really. They were the better team and really went for it. And Pedro on the night, man of the match. What a sensational performance. A great goal from him, but he's Tracking back and his tackling and stuff all game long was very, very good. And uh, yeah, I just think they're coming into this one um, in a good place. It was a good performance against City in the Cup, then a very good performance against a good Spurs team. And now they're going to face off against a team trying to stay up and not playing very well. I'm going to go with a heavy away win. I'm going to go with a 3 0 to Chelsea on the day. And the last game, my friends, that we have to talk about is another derby. There was obviously two games of the week this week. Should have mentioned that Arsenal, Spurs, and Everton, Liverpool. And uh, Everton, Liverpool is what we're going to talk about now and this is a quarter past four kickoff sit down tune in watch it if you can last five in the Premier League between these two teams three wins to Liverpool two draws uh, the last meet was a very narrow one nil win to Liverpool earlier this season um this is just a great way to finish off a weekend of pure action in the Premier League uh, a derby weekend and a Merseyside derby is always one to look forward to it's always got a bit of grit about it hasn't it hard tackles and goals um but this one's interesting because Liverpool are going after this league title. The, the wheels had fallen off a little bit. Numerous draws in the last few weeks. I know they bounced back midweek, but could Everton be the one to put a very sizable spanner in the works? Um, it'll be very interesting to see. Uh, obviously, let, uh, you know Everton bounced back midweek. They'd suffered three losses in a row, but a good win for them, uh, you know, midweek, 3-0. Uh, After that rest, they did look full of energy. They looked back to their attacking best, it has to be said. Um, looked like they could cause trouble every time they went forward. Um, you know, one a little stat for the stat meisters out there. Uh, Gilfie Sigerson is now the highest scoring Icelandic player to play in the Premier League with 57 goals now. Um, trumping Eidegger Johnson's 55. Um, obviously, we all know about Ida, what a Premier League legend he was. Um, and he was quite quite brilliant in the game as well and do this Everton team have enough to hurt this Liverpool team it will be very interesting to see there's a lot of pressure on this game Liverpool get through this surely in the box seat though um a few weeks of misfiring like I've already said from Liverpool but proved that they can do it when the going gets tough and they need to a good 5-0 victory against Watford um, you know uh, Van Dijk was actually on a bloody hat-trick at one point he scored a couple of goals in this game um, but you know clearly the pressure's on and I think that's what has been telling you know in those draws against Leicester West Ham and Manchester United it's points that they really couldn't have afforded to drop but to bounce back like this, score plenty of goals, improve your goal difference, especially on a night where Manchester City didn't play very well but still managed to come away with the three points. It's very, very important and it sends a message to your nearest rivals. For me, Liverpool just need to go into this one, do a professional job, get the goals, get the job done. It doesn't matter if you win ugly. You win this, it's another step closer to that Premier League title. And as far as the game's concerned, I do think Liverpool are going to go, come away with a win. I'm going to go with a 2-1 win to the pool, competitive, but it'll be well worth it if you're a Liverpool fan. So that is my predictions, ladies and gents. Do let me know what you think in the comment section below. And be sure to be leaving me your predictions for not only this match week, but match week 30 to be involved in Fan Zone next week. So there you have it, my friends. We are done and dusted for another week of the Premier League show. I now have a whole week to prepare for next time. It's always difficult trying to get two of these shows out a week, but I've managed to do it. I haven't missed a week yet, either this season. A derby weekend. It's one to look forward to. I hope you enjoy all the football, my friends, and I can only wish all of your teams all the very best. But that is it from me. Remember to like, share, and all that good stuff. You know exactly what to do. But until next time, you've been legends. I'm saluting you all. See you next time. Have a good weekend and all that good stuff. And uh, my beautiful face, we'll be back to talk about all this next time.